Welcome back to the Amazon EU Masters main stage. Ladies, I am still Ushkin. He is still the fantastic Mr. Ox. We're going to be talking about that last game we just saw, Unicorns of Love, sexy edition, looking so damn fine coming off that win. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there were so many curveballs being thrown at them and they just held strong, right? They were like, okay, we have a strong team fighting composition. We have two strong hyper carries in the back line. And I think they both definitely performed exceptionally, especially considering they are players we've seen a lot less in the EU Masters compared to the rest, right? Yep. Uh, we, we saw Reptile and Ruby both basically just feeling like they're untouched in the back line. And then we had these scrappy fights coming in. And there were definitely ones where Bison's found some momentum, but uh, it was just a struggle for them. It really was. And this very, very, very heavy front line coming in on top of you, just you know, with the Nautilus, the Bolivar, the Orn. It was so difficult to just burn them down quick enough that by the time you actually got to where they were at a maybe a kill, you know, lethal level, the Jinx was already going mad. The Jinx was going crazy on the backside. That's the problem, right? It's like you chunk everyone down, but at the end of the day, you couldn't cut through those tanks quick enough. And I think critically, the Lucian got behind, right? You know, we were talking about how getting the Orn Volley Bear ahead maybe wasn't the best game plan. It worked because the yep. Lucian just did nothing. I think his build was like Kraken Slayer, Essence Reaver. That's just never going to cut through a tank, Lord right? Doms, I think, as well. Uh, right yeah, right at I mean, the end. That's the problem right at the end, yeah. right? You needed, you needed Pen sooner. You need to be able to cut through them. Ideally, you want your Lucian on three items is a big spike we normally talk about, but four items would be even better. Fights like this where you see so much damage coming out of Bisons, and it feels like, oh, yeah, they're firing, firing, firing. But then and, you see Reptile, and yeah. you realize he's untouched. And, and it's actually Bison's <laughs> health bars drop more. And then the Lucian dashes forward towards the Jinx, and even with the shield on, just can't approach. And I think that's fundamentally the problem, is that they had this Lucian top as that reliable DPS. It fell behind. The AP Cogmo, I guarantee we'll see the damage graphs in a little bit. I guarantee the total damage done will be a lot, but it was so superfluous. It was like no... Uh, actually relevant damage coming in a lot of the fights. And that's the big thing. Yes, you're you could make a little bit of amount of damage, but if you take the, you know, say you do 8,000 damage in a game and 4,000 of that was onto the AD carry or something like that, that's incredibly relevant. But if you do 20,000 and 17,000 of that was onto the tanks, it's not really going to be that much of a difference. when they don't die, right? Yeah, exactly. They're I tanks. Mean, the had <laughs> enough HP. And then obviously we saw the Bloodthirster picked up by Reptile. I think that's another thing is that was a good choice to invest in something that would just deny the poke from working. It really made Ruby being the one person you could reliably poke can have it stick, uh, but then he was just playing excellently, and they really didn't really find windows for that. No, they really didn't. And again, I'm super excited to see how the more, how much more we can get out of this Unicorns of Love side, because again, they're now 9-0 and across play-ins and main stage. They are looking through a tear at the moment, and really seem to be going from strength to strength. And I gotta say, like, in this matchup, you saw, well, one Zeri ban, and then four other bans aimed at these picks that you wouldn't expect to see in the, in the draft phase. Bison's being targeted specifically, but then they still came out with some wacky stuff. Unicorns are uh, held strong. I said Bison's look like a scary team and best ones. A lot of people will go into this thinking we need to know what we can go up against basically anything. Uh, and the man is sold out. And you can see, like, the Cog will highest damage in the game, but it just it didn't matter in the end. So much damage. Even the Lucian, who we said felt underwhelming, he was pumping damage on these front lines. It just didn't do enough. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Your, da your damage graph is a nice stat, but it needs to be relevant. It needs to be a part on the right people. Otherwise, it's just no point. And I think critically, the big thing that I want to highlight is we talked about this mid jungle, the Ivan, the, the, the Trundle, how strong they could be as a unit. We saw one team fight where everyone else died and they really held up together, but we didn't find that early momentum, right? You intro a victor, the, the 2v2s weakened because of that. I was hoping to see them really run away with the mid-jungle and then they could find the momentum from there. And I think because they didn't, that's why this really started to falter. Uh, and as we got later, they just could not deal with the Jinx. Yeah, well, big win there for the Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition and, of course, for the Prime League as well. But we are going to be bringing ourselves into our next series, our last series of the day, and it's going to be Fnatic TK coming up against Bifrost. Fnatic in now in the Super League coming up against the NLC. This is a bit of a grudge match. Yeah, 100%, right? You've left the NLC. You're going up against one of their representatives, the last remaining representative, and they kept three players from that lineup being Brooks and Maxi still on the roster, but then we see Baka and Oscar Rinin, new additions who have been absolutely stellar, including Oscar Rinin. I feel like he's one of the most hyped players in Spain right now. Uh, just huge development over the course of this play. Got MVP for their finals performance. Yeah, and I think as well, when we, we're talking about the uh, the LVP and we're talking about the, the Super League as a whole, this is a region that has kind of felt a little bit of burned about, you know, losing a couple of spots, but now they've got to go up against NLC's Bifrost, who are on a little bit of a tear. A lot of people probably expect this team to not do as well, and there's a lot of old faces in there. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's such a crazy mix, but we've seen Odie playing in the Ultra League of Jewels most recently in the Super League, uh, right? Shikari and Mainstay, who previously was on old Fnatic uh, Rising rosters when they got top four in EU Masters. Fury has been a big talking point for the NLC. I feel like this is, you know, an uphill battle. I feel like Fnatic yes. are coming in as, honestly, a lot of people's tournament favorites so far. They dominated in Spain, and as much as there was uh, a couple of games they lost in the regular season, they broke records for the regular season performance. They managed to 3-0 their finals against Bisons, and even at one point had a 14-win streak in the league. So this is very much an exceptional team, but Bifrost have proved that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with strong teams as they have to fight their way through playing. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to not delay any more time. We are starting the game. I've pressed the button as we come into the... Sorry, camera. Just so you know, it's on my desk, so anytime I hit something, it will shake. But we are going to jump straight in two don't picks hit and bands. <laughs> don't hit anything. That's the, that's what we learned from this. Yeah. But it is going to be the Fnatic TK on the blue, Bifrost on the red. And we're already starting to see some of those little bit more of a target bands coming out. The Senna and the Gangplank, definitely not something you would see as a generic hold hold. Yeah, definitely not typical. And Fnatic definitely have a lot of experience playing up against the Senna because that's something that Bison's lent on heavily. Uh, we're looking to target that away from the side of Bifrost. I feel like something to talk about is kind of mid laners here. Back has been really exceptional, uh, particularly on the control mage that we've seen a lot in the current meta. Fury has had a great uh, split in, in the NLC, but I feel like something to mention is that uh, we, we've often seen him have some champion pool issues so far this split. We've seen him exceptional on things like the Akali previously, obviously not picked up as, as, as often, and these control mages haven't been as frequent. Interesting enough though, we see Zeri ban on blue side. I was gonna say the Zeri ban on blue side seems very unorthodox, very uncommon. We generally see it you've seen and relegated to the red side of saying, look, you have to ban this. But it does mean that Bifrost get themselves another priority ban. So they go away and take away the Volley Bear. Fnatic recognize that and say, look, we're going to lock in the Jarvan. And now you got yourselves an opportunity here for Bifrost. Do you go for your AD carry jungle? Do you look for something else? You have a couple of different options available to you. Yeah, I think you could even actually go for support if you want to pick like some type of Thresh. We often see Jarvan ban away when Thresh is on the, uh, sorry, Thresh ban away when Jarvan's on the cards because you can obviously Lantern out of that. Uh, but it might be early to commit to it here. Either way, jungle often picked up in this early rotation. And in terms of AD carries, right, you know, we've seen the Zaya pretty high in priority overall. We've seen oftentimes teams will pick it in order just to have the safety net. But also, you can play around the long range of the Salty Feathers. Uh, so just allows you to, uh, particularly into a Jarvan, if he cataclysms you, you go up in the air. Feathers go down, it means he basically forfeits his life to keep you in the cage. Yeah, absolutely. We do apologize for the slight delay on picks and bans. We are working tirelessly to get ourselves back into it. Once we have any update, we will, of course, let you guys know. But we've already seen the kind of style that the side of Fnatic want to go for. And I do want to take this moment to try and talk about the Super League. And honestly, the hype that was going into this year, you had so many massive names joining that league. Fnatic moving from NLC over to the Super League. Barca created a team. Koi had a team. And that was adding on to the already massive plethora of massive names that are already there. This is a league that is coming in very excited and a lot of expectations. Yeah, and for, for anyone who's not like too familiar with the history of the ERLs, Spain used to be the ERL, right? Yep. Back in the day, it was the one that was on the forefront. And in recent years, LFL has started to claim a lot of titles and the popularity has ballooned. But Spain, it feels like they are answering back. They have these big rosters. Fnatic, uh, Fnatic are looking stellar as, as a lineup. And then on top of that, you know, the fact they had Barcelona and Koi and interesting enough, Bifrost are the ones who knocked Barcelona out. I was going to say, Barcelona were in our play-in stage, and they actually got knocked out. So we've already seen the NLC kind of knock someone down. And they were able to make it just look so, so good on their side. Honestly, it looks very convincing from Bifrost as we bring ourselves right back in. So a little bit of regional pride here for Fnatic TK as well. But for Bifrost, they want to try and keep that momentum going. Yeah, looking at the rise, which has been you know, one of the more popular picks for Fury, obviously, and contest that mid prior, quite bulky, able to roam to sides. And I'd love if they commit to the Lee Sin as well as this because it's such a strong duo. Uh, you want someone who can play for you as a Lee Sin. You have that point and click CC with the root, and then you can land that Sonic Wave. But what I will say is they haven't picked up an AD carry yet. Fnatic will likely take their AD carry here. And then Bifrost might be in a little, little bit of a tricky spot because if they want to answer AD carries, uh, you know, they only have that one pick to do so. But I, you can go like AD carry support here and then 
you can't be, respond to both. You have to pick one. Honestly, the Zyra Khan could be fantastic here. And just in terms of the combination with the Jarvan, it is a very powerful combination you can go with. And getting all those extra abilities with the Lover's Duo, or the extra extended abilities, shall we say, with the Lover's Duo can be fantastic. But we'll see what they want to go for. And honestly, going with the mid lane makes a lot of sense here. You want to try and make sure that that Rise doesn't have free reign. Yeah, so it ends up being a pretty safe trade-off in terms of your answering mid, you pick your AD carry. And now Bifrost, if they want to play safe, they pick the AD carry here. They ensure that they have something decent uh, in the matchup. Something, you know, you could look towards your fellows, towards the Jinx. Uh, even the MF is a good matchup into the Zaya. Or they can go in a different direction. They can pick, you know, a top laner here and then ban away anything they don't want to okay. play into. They are going to go for the North and Shikari. Uh, and now if they want to, they can ban away picks for Oscar Riddin to ensure a good matchup for him. Yeah, absolutely. They can go for the top lane bans. They can go for bot lane bans. They have a lot of different available to them because don't forget, when we come out of the second phase of bans, Bifrost do have first pick. So this is going to be an interesting side of the draft. And right now, I do feel like we are looking at Fnatic kind of building up that very explosive team where the Zaya and the LeBlanc can pick a champion if you walk too far forward, you're dead. Yeah, 100%. And I first actually opt in the band supports here. So they're focused on getting the priority support for themselves. Uh, maybe not too concerned about top laners. Bear in mind, they've already banned two top laners out here. Uh, but I like actually ban away Illusion AD carry. Interesting enough, considering the fact that, you know, the, the, the Rise and the Nar are locked. Yeah, the Rise and the Nar are locked. So, you know, what are the target AD carries? I feel like there's a lot of things in my mind that you might be concerned about. Uh, maybe they were worried about Illusion Nami being something that would be problematic. So, but essentially denying that with the one ban. Yeah, absolutely. And it is something that can just be very powerful. We won't be seeing it this game, but we can now see where they want to go for it. I like the Rakan ban. We talked about it a little bit there, just how powerful it can be just with the Zaya alone, let alone with something like LeBlanc and Jarvan to facilitate it as well. So they get that one off the board. And now we got to see where Bifrost want to go for. I imagine they will be end up going towards either their first support pick. They still technically can go for Nady Carry, but there's still so much on the board. I don't think they'll feel pressured. I think if there's anything that stands out is we want to pick this because because it's still available, you take the support. Uh, I feel like if if you want to play safe and get a counter matchup, which I feel I feel like it probably prefer. I feel like unless you want to commit to something like the Nautilus, but the Nautilus has just been banned. Uh, I feel like you probably just take any carry here and commit to that, and then you you ensure a good matchup for the bot lane. Bifrost bot lane have been such a massive proponent of the success. Them being strong in the 2v2 has been super important. I feel like you want to ensure that uh, as much as possible. Yeah, and that looks like what they're going to try and do here is just pick up their AD carry. They know they have plenty of the goats between in terms of the Felios and the Jinx. So they're going to lock that one in nice and easy. Now, Fnatic, you got to round out your composition. You need a support and you need a top laner here. Where do you want to see them bring their composition? Yeah, I think in terms of support, there's, you know, you can play a bunch of things as a safe blind. A lot of those engage priority picks have been trimmed away. There's still things like the Alistair available if you want to lean to that, which can be bullied out a bit more heavily. But the thing is, you have engaged in the Jarvan, so you have quite a bit of flexibility in what you take in the support role. But top, you can either just take something that scales up and has a safe lane like the Orn. The alternative would have been playing something aggressive, like we have matchups that can punish the Nar, but it very much feels like Fnatic. Uh, they're happy with Oscar and playing the Orn, having that strong engage. And remember, you're up against a Jinx, something you can absolutely punish. Yeah, absolutely. If you're able to get the Orn and the Jarvan onto that backside and create that corridor, if you will, for the LeBlanc to just beeline onto that backside, a lot you're able to kind of go for. And the Nami here locked in. So we're going in with a big team fight presence and a lot of laning prowess. Yeah, but it's just see what Bifrost taking to this. Uh, a lot of the strong engage picks that can punish a Nami have been trimmed away, right? Like. The Lucian and the Nautilus are the big ones. There is still the Thresh available, which would be uh, for a great safety net towards the uh, the Jinx. But we'll see if they opt to go for that or something that could definitely punish the Nami pick. Uh, at the moment, maybe going for that Pike right now. They are running straight out of time. Maybe they do a last minute swap and they do. They go from the Fisherman to the Fish and they pick themselves up the Tam Kench. Yeah, so Thresh and Tama picks so you can sort of play defensively to protect AD carry. But this means that, because the reason Fnatic can go for the Nami is they have engaged with the jungler and top laner. Uh, often, you know, People look to their support, have the engage role. But Rux is taking this and it, it syncs so well with the Zaya. It's not quite on the, the Lucian Ami level, but if you put your E onto the Zaya, so you can use a long way, long range feathers, like you QE, yep. and you can just chunk someone out from a distance. Absolutely, and you get the, the extra empowered auto attacks. You also have the healing available to you, so the Zaya can be a little bit more safer and kind of take a couple of rocket hits, maybe even a tongue lash, and then come back, and you'll be able to get it back with the ebb and flow. So lots of power in the Nami in that bot side. And honestly, looking at Fnatic's composition, it is a front to back. They are looking to hard engage and then just try and blow up people on the backside with that LeBlanc. I mean, they, they can literally just charge forward to the engage yep. shuls. Desire can follow up easily. 
Uh, I feel like they have a mobile target you can look towards. Yes, the Tom acts as a, a safety net to a degree, but if you catch them both in the Cataclysm, probably the Tom will die and then the Jinx will die as well. Yeah. Or, or the Rise or whatever. So <laughs> Two for one deal. <laughs> I, I like Fnatic's composition. I like the fact they brought the Nami expecting a safety net support who they can just have a good uh, lane presence again. I think the bands came out. Uh, but I do feel like there's uh, there's tools to buy Frost, and I want to see early aggression. You have Rise and Lee Sin make things happen. I want you to be challenging the enemy jungler. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see the number one seed from the Superliga coming in against the number two from the NLC. It is our last game of the day, but we are going to be seeing absolute explosive fireworks coming out now on top of the rift as we wait to see exactly how it goes. Of course, the bot side, you have a lot of safety here for both the Zaya and the Jinx, but with a Jarvan and a Lee Sin, it's all about those early ganks. For sure, and I think the fact you have the Rise, right, able to, to find Pryo in the mid lane uh, and lean towards you. I, I want to see Seaboy utilizing uh, his pressure pre-6, pre particularly level 3, is when both uh, him and the the Rise are quite strong. But it's not to say that, that Fnatic don't have tools, right? Jarvan, notoriously a good ganker. Maybe not as good in terms of dueling, uh, but definitely there's opportunities he can find. Particularly if you get an early gank off on a Fury, you could even go bot lane, you land the flag and drag. Easy to find that setup. See what they want to go for. Standard setup at the moment. Is, uh, we've got a little bit of time, and these are two regions feeling... Possibly a little scorned coming into the EU Masters 2022 split. Two regions, I feel, that yeah, a lot of... Me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I call a spade a spade. But this is a great opportunity now for both of these sides to represent their region and say, look, we deserve more credit. We deserve more things. Especially a team like NLC who have never actually won the EU Masters Championship but have been so tantalizingly close so many times. Back-to-back -back finals yeah. um, at this point. And... You know, I feel like people look at X7 as being the big representatives. Bifrost did challenge them uh, during the regular season. They had uh, two wins over them. Then when it came to playoffs, they put up definitely a good fight as it was double elimination. Uh, but in the end, couldn't win out the finals. So X7 definitely the, the big sort of representative for the region. But Bifrost, the fact that especially as they push their way through play-ins, people are hoping that they'll do well. But this is a tough matchup. Fnatic, first seed for the Super League and a lot of storied names in the lineup. Not only storied names, but a storied season as well. They put in work this year in the Superliga. And again, we talked about all the big names in the Superliga. Fnatic TK made them look like easy, made it look like it was easy mode at the point. And you have, you know, a lot of different ways to kind of look at that from the point of view of, you know, was it meta, was it champions, with every way it looks at it, it doesn't matter. They still look dominant. And that's something you've got to fear when going up against such a tough opponent to crack. We see, you know, bot lane's been going pretty even at the moment. Uh, I feel like, you know, there is a lot of poke you can you can lay down with the, the Nami in combination with the Zaya, but early levels is not really afforded to you. Level 3 is where you can start to trade a bit more freely. Uh, and ultimately, Tom Ken still a lot of lane presence early on. You see, back could just go for heavy trade in the Fury, and Fury struggling already in this matchup in the 1v1. It's going to be this way. I'm curious to see what type of build it goes for. We are still seeing people lean in towards that tank rise build, but has had received some nerfs in the last few patches or so. So curious to see where he ends up taking it. But the end of it all, it I is... I think it has to be tank rise in this game. I feel like... Yeah, I was going to say, like... I think like AP rise, you just, you're never going to be able to walk up. Never going to be able to walk up. Never going to be able to do anything. But you got pressure in the bot side here. It is pretty... Part and parcel for the Jinx to be able to get those rockets down, clear out those minion waves pretty damn easily. But with the priority you now have mid, you already got yourself Baka coming down towards this bot side. A bubble lands, the knock up, and the first blood. That's gonna be Fnatic TK taking the fight to Bifrost. That's a difference in the mid prior, right? Bifrost bot lane could move first, but didn't have the support of their mid laner. The bubble lands from Rux, they get the kill, they get the bot side scuttle as well, all going in favor of Fnatic. See Fury, you know, not been having a good time in the mid lane matchup. Hasn't had a chance to TP back and pick up a tier yet. Has healed up a fair bit from the Corrupting Potion. But if this Lee Sin falls behind, if this Rise doesn't become relevant, I really see Bifrost struggling as it goes in the late stages. Will definitely be a struggle and they have to try and put down something. Like you said earlier, this is Fnatic TK, a argued favorite for the tournament right now and it's been a long time since we've seen a spanish representative even in the finals last time they were in the finals was 2019 summer against big before the last time they won it was 2018 that was it's been such a long time since the superliga has seen success here in the Euro amazon yeah, european last, masters last time they won it was 
Mad Lions with 28, like, or 28 self -made Nemesis. Yep. Crown shot was it as well? I believe so, yes. Yeah, like that was so... Like, you think how long Mad ago Lions is? before Mad Lions were in LEC. Yeah, that was such <laughs> a long time. And no, there's definitely been good representatives that have been sent, but they haven't won. That's the critical thing. And we've seen we've seen the LFL win. Ultra, Ultra League win. We've seen the Prime League win during those times. Uh, but neither of these two regions have yet. So still look for the opportunity. I think particularly Fnatic, the organization got close with their finals, right? Being... Uh, and Maxi in particular. Oh. Jules, you just Jules. died before. Get out. He needs to leave. He will eventually get himself out there. But that is a that is a risky business to be playing. Yeah, he's going so aggressive and he's kind of disconnected from his jungler, right? And I feel like Fnatic are doing a really good job of responding as a multiple man unit uh, to stop the pressure. Doing well at the moment. We will see now Baka going in, will not land the chains, and there is going to be the Rune Prison to try and trade that back. So with the pressure that the Fnatic bot lane has able to garner for themselves, Rox finds himself with a lot of free time and just being able to rotate and, and fi figure out where he wants to make these moves around the map. I think he can just go. He's got ult now. Yeah, he's like running away. Just take, I'll take the wave prior, and they're going to rotate towards bot. Fight for bot lane, trying to apply pressure in the 2v2, but we'll have to back away and respect uh, the three-man that could move down. This could just be Dragon now for Fnatic TK. There's not really a lot else you can do about it. You don't really have your jungler in the right position. TP from Baka means that he comes back with a lost chapter, but Maxi here and the new Drake, the Hex Dragon is very difficult to take solo right now. This is thing, Fury managed to get a reset off, managed to find Pryo, uh, and as a result, Fnatic have to be respectful, right? They played around the fact that Baka had that early mid Pryo. Now that's going in the other direction, they don't want to overstep. I feel like they're more comfortable Going in the latest stage of this matchup, they don't feel like they have to force anything, uh, but they are still being proactive at the moment on the map. Being as proactive as they possibly can be, and despite that first early kill going over the side of Fnatic TK, we will see some pretty decent trading for them in the bot side as Duel does get himself back up towards the summoners, and we'll have a little bit of extra safety. And of course, you are going to get even more of that when you're able to get that level 6. You, of course, get the Devour, and that gives you so much more agency to go for this. Got to be careful though, you got to be aware of where these feathers are flying because uh, you forget about them and that could be a dead old catfish. Yeah, but we do see a reset from Maxi and he's in up towards the top side, but about 50 seconds on the Herald and we also see a reset from Rux. I feel like he should probably, I feel like he might, you know, the thought process would be head towards Herald, but there's a big wave being stacked in. So perhaps he wants to head over and defend his AD carry, and this actually leaves a window. If Bifrost shoved this in and reset, they can actually make first move towards the Herald. Yeah, they really can, and this is something we talk about a lot in terms of, you know, regular day-to-day -day casting, but it's kind of something you forget. Despite the Rift Hell being on the top side of the map, it's actually your bot lane pressure and priority that can actually lead you to getting that objective. Yeah, so Ruxy's showing up bot, and this, in my mind, this should be a signal to Bifrost we can go for the Herald, right? It's in 15 seconds, you see both members there. Jewel can just move over. And there's not even a wave for Fnatic to work with, so we should be completely comfortable. Although the reset's going to come in now, I guess they, they expect to make it in time. They expect to be able to make it, and to be honest with you, right now, Bifrost haven't been making a super aggressive move as of yet. And importantly as well, Shikari hasn't just gone into his Meganar, so he's not really in a position to go for a fight unless they want to fight exactly right now. And with the AD carries being kept in bot side, it's going to be a 4v4. No level 6s for the supports of either team, but we are going to see all ultimates available for everyone else. Yeah, we do now see Odie getting the reset, and he can just go mid and then threaten being a Herald, right? I feel like that should be the play here. Uh, just by the, the fact that, you know, by uh, Fnatic think, oh, the AD carry could also turn up. You can then just move down towards bot to catch the wave, but actually he's heading straight there, so... I don't know, could be better use of that pressure right now. Both teams just toying with the idea, but no one really finding a window to go for it. Oh, double bubble, boil and trouble. That's going to be another dead catfish right into the boiling pot. And that is a great catch here for Fnatic. Seaboy's looking, but there's no way you go into three people. Jimmy, Fnatic, you got the pick. Go over the Herald. Should be the instant signal to try that one. Not quite going for it just yet. And if you're wondering why we're giving space to things, if you're wondering why we're stopping every now and again for different things, is that these are the moves we tend to see lead into bigger fights. And it just seems like we're kind of like tiptoeing around the issue right now until we actually get a commitment here like we have here from Seaboy. And in the end, Bifrost will be ones uh, 
making first move on this. Rooks is just hovered in the area for such a long time, does not have his level six. Oh, we're gonna see a little bit of engage here. You've already got Duel back on the map, but it's a 1v1 on the bot side here. You're gonna have to flash heal there, but the flash and the heal is available for Bean, as he takes him down on 1v1. The Zaya reigns supreme. And now we come back into the fight around this Rift Herald. It still hasn't been started, Ox. Yeah, they're still just going back and forth, and it kind of feels like Fnatic are using it as a bait tool. They're not even started themselves. They just don't want Bifrost to do it. Uh, and they find favor in the bot lane, right? Bean gets a kill, a solo 1v1. He bins both summoners from Odi. And I actually think that Odi just face checked him, which we'll get to see. Yeah, it Odi's is. like, okay, I'm alone. Oh no, I walk. He actually into messes a brush. up traps as well. Yeah. Which just means that it's a, it's a pretty easy kill. Yes, he'll use the flash here from Bean, but two summoners down now for Odi and. Finally, the Rift Herald gets started up for what feels like the eighth time so far in the last few minutes. But Shikari's about to lose Mega very shortly. They know that Maxi's sitting there on a ward. And again, we might just play this bait, but look at the level difference right coming in right now. There's actually a bit of a significance here between the junglers. Z-Boy needs to be so, so careful. Here we go. Flag and drag over. They're going to be able to get the smite down to keep him alive. But they will kill him off and take the Rift Herald. But are playing with their food. It feels like they were waiting for Bifrost to start it so they could steal it and punish, right? Uh, it constantly felt like they were just doing this back and forth and they wanted to get more than just the Herald itself. They also didn't want Bifrost to cross map. By forcing Bifrost to, to start it, you know that if you defeat, if you, you know, take them out, take the Herald, it's just an absolute win. Uh, so Fnatic, they're at 1,500 gold ahead, but it's four kill lead and they have the Herald in pocket. Things are looking really good for them. Very, very solid start for them right now. And you've also got two kills and have finished up Eclipse right now for Bean. So he is, he is very happy with where he is on the map. As we can see now, Oscar Earn. It's like yeah. a zoning ignite. It's a zoning ignite, but there's going to be the ultimate coming out here. I don't know if Shikari can actually do anything. This is a, this is a wet noodle fight. This is going to be them kind of like slapping each other with their handbags. Yeah, you saw even like Oscar Earn just stand still for a moment, but now, Look at the bot lane. We have the Eclipse completed for Bean. We have uh, three points. Sorry, not three points. Yeah, he'll have three points into his Q. Uh, four actually at level eight. So his first combo will deal a ton of damage, especially if you get the E from the Nami as well. You can really just chunk out the Jinx from such a long distance. Well, so the Jinx is, despite having the solo kill against them, Odi is still up about 10 CS or so in that bot lane. Should be going back to maybe pick up the first item. I mean, only the components of it as of right now did rush the boots as well. So does delay it just a little bit. But again, it's about a 1500 gold lead now for Fnatic TQ. And they are going to go back themselves up towards this dragon. They should be able to take it. To say that though, there is a least in the area, but they've got priority in bot mid. Very difficult for Bifrost to contest. Yeah, Fnatic just doing what they need to secure these objectives. It's going to be a pretty late first dragon, so Soul not really on the cards anytime soon. Uh, but they secure that one, just start to work towards that scaling point. And, you know, despite the compositions, because I feel like there's a lot of strength in late stages for Fnatic's comp, uh, Bifrost have tended the NLC to be a comp who lent into the later stages of the game. Particularly for Odi in the AD carry role, he was their big powerhouse they looked towards. Is that a deficit right now? But, you know, you are playing that Jinx. It always has to be taken into account. The Jinx is a factor upon herself. And remember, even with the nerfs that came in, she's still pretty much the exact same champion at level 9. Beyond, she is still a level beyond that, behind that. But we are slowly getting to that point. And this is where we start to see where the small little movements come in now. When the map starts to become a little bit more open, once those turret plates start to fall, turrets start to go down. But I was looking like they're making a move. They have Pryo mid. They have their mid, they have their jungle, they have oh, the herald. This, this is by frost. Yeah, go for it. By frost. You got to be so careful, but you got to make sure you stay as a duo here. They do recognize that Baka is off onto the side, and they don't want to get caught by him. But this is going to be a full turret in the bot side. Perfect use of the herald in the book of Ox. Yeah, uh, uh, the correct goal, 100%. Um, and as much as they don't get the kills at the back of it, they don't overcommit. Uh, and now they're going to be able to move up towards top. You can see Bifrost are going for a counterplay, but this is too slow because there's TP available for back. If you try and dive this Orn, who has ult and exhaust and a LeBlanc nearby, you know, it's not going to happen. So they get the blue. Yeah. And I'm going to say it, I'm what? Yeah. <laughs> here we go, though. The Orn Orn comes out. They're going to get a Google knock up here and try and make this one work as Duel has to gobble gobble up the rise. Make sure he does not get caught. And that's going to be a big key ultimate used here as Duel goes very uh, aggressive. You don't really want to be there, buddy. 
that's not your priority in these fights. The exhaust goes down onto him. He's still tanking up and being very good at just keeping himself alive. The Q lands as he go and follow it. He does. He gets the kill, but can he get out? No, he cannot. And even the tidal rave on the backside to make sure that no one on Bifrost follows up. It's a one for one. And Bifrost, they just wanted so they wanted everything. We've had such a go. Oh, more coming in. More coming in indeed. We are gonna see now Baco. No real mana here. The ultimate from the Jinx, the flash, he still keeps himself alive tantalizingly close but just not quite enough yeah a lot of back and forth a lot of scrapping there in the end it's just a one for one jewel going way too aggressive i feel like tom kench is going super aggressive it's kind of been a theme today uh but he does end up surviving gonna replay off that one and essentially did I just not sure what the game plan was there for the Tom Kench. Um, you knew the you knew the Orn was there. You just saw him ult. Yeah. <laughs> you had to use your ultimate to get the rise out. <laughs> it just felt weird. And I think the thing is they don't actually have the damage to pierce to him uh, in that situation, uh, and they do end up killing the Orn, but it's still such a weird play. And the critical thing is we see Shikari and we see Odi move here, uh, but this whole time we just have been off the side lane farming. Yeah. The only move he makes is to the river to clear a control wall, then he's back in the lane and farm. Yeah. Well, we do see a little bit of armor extension from Baka, and that's another kind of theme of the day of LeBlanc's not really having the, uh, the, the no wherewithal to know that they can go in and out of fights. But now with the prior you have in the top side, you're going to see the Jarvan hovering up here, and you got to get out. You haven't got the Devourer just yet. The Flash Flag and Drag does land onto the Catch Fish, but they do the Flash away. Here comes the Realm Hopper as well. The Tidal Wave doesn't land onto anybody in now. Bifrost thinking they can maybe turn it around, but not quite able to make it work as here we go another re-engage as we got back on the back side he's able to catch out the lead symbol maybe they can turn this one around a little bit better for them duel very close to death but he's a very big man with a lot of health bar not enough to keep him up and that's gonna be two quick kills going over the side of Fnatic. they are starting to ramp up this pace and by crossing commit to try and turn the play around and because they don't find anything they feel so desperate to continue it uh, and unfortunately just not able to do so Eventually gets to the point where Fnatic go right, they've committed enough, we have the LeBlanc here, we can turn it around. Now we do see in the bot lane, uh, Shikari really bullying out Oscar Riddin on this pick, right? 30 CS lead between them, he's constantly harassing him, providing pressure, and uh, gonna, like, eventually get that tower left to his own devices, so that's a positive element, but it's just not that important in the scope of the game. I saw this Lee Sin pick, Lee Sin pick for Seaboy. I saw this Rise pick a proactive mid who can roam around the map, and they are struggling. One and three for Seaboy so far. And we look at the goal difference 4,000 at 17 minutes. It is sucking rough. It is kind of what we expected. And by Frost, we have seen them come back from deficits before in the NLC. But man, I mean, 2,000 goal differential between any carries. And this is a lethality Zai who's going to spike quicker and cheaper than the Jinx. Yeah, that's the big thing. You get those cheaper items going for you. The Serrated Dirk, far more effective at getting those, you know, real big punchy oh, look, moments. Mana means almost stacked. That's a huge spike. But you're going to be two Curry items when the Jinx is one. That is ridiculous right now. There's going to be two items picked up, but the Krakensayer just got finished there for Odie. And again, this is just Fnatic TK looking so powerful in this game and kind of picking up where they left off at the Super League and looking indomitable and just kind of saying, look, we are just better players. We have a better composition, a better understanding. We'll just win. And you know what this game is making me think? I want to play Zaya Nami. It looks fun. It looks a hell of a lot of fun. But we'll see now. See, boy, trying to get himself on the back side of this oh Zaya, but he's disappeared. LeBlanc making the biggest of men just flash before our eyes and gone. That damn it. I mean, that's Zaya, right? So hard to engage into. Bean doing his best when Shea wasn't kicked in the wrong direction. No, oh, here we go, though. This could be a pretty significant push. However, they aren't quite able to take him out, and Maxi falls. Remember, it is still dragging up, and you don't have a jungler now, but Shikari, you can't really join the team as Baka's playing bouncer. Still gonna take you mid, right? They got what they wanted. Obviously, Maxi going down isn't ideal, but Fnatic are just unrelenting right now, trying to further push this lead. Dragon is up and available, but I don't think Bifrost is gonna feel confident to take it. I don't think they can get anywhere near it. They need to clear out vision in their own jungle. They need to make sure that it's safe for anyone to walk up. They're actually not going to go for it just yet. They're going to get some resets in because they are probably sitting on a little bit of gold. Oh, but so they want the jungler there. Yeah, they also want their jungler there. Just to be sure, to be sure. But this is just Fnatic TK taking control. Four yeah. turrets to none is just so oppressive. You're pushed so far back into your own side of the jungle. It just becomes harder to even just contest anything. I'm going to have the mana immune spike for being right. And the, the damage, especially with the dami with mandate, is just going to be absurd. Like, if you land a QE combo, that's the thing. Like, you know, Zaya think of the Q auto E combo. 
that's in an ideal world, but it's shorter range. You have to be in auto range. You can just QE from a distance, uh, and with the, the mandate, with the, uh, the lethality from the Zaya, it will chunk anyone out. Yeah, you also get not even just the mandate, you get the, the auto attack steroid from the Nami as well. Like, you're able to do so much if anyone's anywhere near you. And this is becoming a lot harder for the side of Bifrost. We are going to have ourselves a Cloud Rift. So, not the greatest of dragons here, but. Still a win condition nonetheless, as we can see now that Bifrost, they got to find something. Where do, where do they try and come back into this? How do they try and come back into this? Uh, I think you could possibly look to kill off Skoridin in the side lane. It's a bit tricky because you have the LeBlanc for TP. But like if you go, like let's say Oscarin is overextended or is getting chunked out by Shikari, you have the Rise turn up, you kill him, you both have TP to rejoin the rest of your team. That can work in theory. The problem is they just, they don't really have pressure anywhere apart from between the top laners. Uh, and they don't have great engage tools, right? Uh, you know, you really kind of need a flank from uh, from an R at least in to start a fight. And most of the situations, like if you look at who they're fighting against, a LeBlanc and a Zaya are the carries. They are not easy to engage on the best of times, and you just don't have the tools to make it easier for yourself. No, you're gonna hope and pray the Fnatic TK maybe go a little bit overzealous, a little bit far a lot further. Yeah, a lot overzealous, and maybe just kind of maybe separate a little bit more because, in terms of front to back team fighting, this is fantastic from Fnatic TK. They've got a Jarvan and an Orn who are starting to build up those ar armor and health items. You've got the safety of the Nami in the backside, and then a LeBlanc and the Zaya just pure burst. It's gonna be so difficult for I mean, Bifrost to find an opportunity. You can't approach from one direction against Fnatic. No, they uh, broke up recently because. Was it recently? Was because it years ago? It was ages ago. I don't know. Come man. on, I'm an old like, man. Leave you're me alone. Right. <laughs> you have the Nami, like the tidal wave and chokes and things. You have the feathers. You have the, the horn. I feel like you need to get need to get creative with your approaches, find different angles to go for. Uh, it just still feels difficult. You can see Sonic Wave lands from Sea Boy. He's not really interested. The whole team has moved through. They got mid prior, then swept into the top side. They're looking to pressure this tier two. Here we go. Tidal wave comes down. Jewel has to flash away. He can't devour himself. And that means you're down that very crucial summoner. It did all it cost you was one ultimate from Rooks. And now Fnatic TK. Honestly, it's so weird. It's so strange to see how methodical they've been because right up until this moment, it was Bifrost sitting in bushes around their own jungle trying to find someone out. But because they were so careful and calculated, Fnatic TK were never caught out. Well, this is what you kind of do. So you push mid up, right? Uh, and you have someone who's who's pushing, like having tops push slowly. You then move into this topside jungle as a unit. You sweep out all the vision in the area, uh, and then you can catch the, the wave coming in top to apply pressure to tier two. Oh, here They'll we get go. The tier two, but they consistently look this is what you talked about. You need to find the Orn Asana, but immediately Baka in here with a TP. They're going to try and run away off this because they don't want this fight, but never mind. They're going to try and go on top of it anyway. They will get the Mega Nar, and they should be able to burst out this Orn. That's the pick they needed, and they burnt the TP from Baka. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic, right? Because I said my concern was a little Blanc being able to TP in. But the Blanc has now beaten the TP, and you still got the favorable play. So now, if you go for that again, you know Baka can't turn up. And critically, Fury and Shikari still have their TP. So although Baron is on the cards, it's not really a concern. And the reason why that worked so well was the timing. They'd just seen that Fnatic had all gone for the resets. They knew that they couldn't even set up around Baron. Uh, so a nice play from, from Bifrost. It doesn't drastically change the state of the game, but more of that is absolutely what they need. It doesn't drastically change the game, but it gives you something that you probably didn't have about two seconds ago, which is time. You get a oh, couple I think, more I seconds. I say hope. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you time. Hope is too optimistic, but it gives you time. And it, look, it's the, the, the Cloud Soul isn't going to be their biggest of problems. You're probably not going to have that much of a priority on it. It's still only, I only say only, but it's still significant, but it's still only 4,000. That hasn't gone anywhere in the last five minutes and critically it's only two dragons right because the first was so late it's a cloud soul i feel like fanatic's composition you know cloud soul is nice but there's no one really who benefits from it massively uh Bifrost can just, if they can keep this game going, the Jinx is going to get to a point where she remains relevant. Yes, there's a lot of tools to punish it, but you have a Tom Kent, you have that safety net. That's the whole point of the pick. Yeah, and you've also got the disengage with the kick from Lee Sin as well. Should that be a position you need to use it for? You're now trying to see where we're going in terms of the items. I'm going to stop myself very shortly as Maxi just trying to make himself a nuisance in the top side. You do have two items here onto OD, but nearly a third here for the Zaya. So Bean looking very, very powerful on this Zaya, but like we said, the longer this game goes on, if we're at 23 minutes and then five minutes later, it's still a 4,000 gold lead. That becomes less and less relevant. So for Fnatic TK, I want to see a bit more agency. I want to see a little bit more punchiness right now. You've kind of you've kind of coasted a little bit right now. 
Well, they are now looking to try and collapse the Chikari. He's got Mega. This is not exactly an easy one to do. And you can see it there. Maxi says, hang on, I didn't realize the bar was so full. They're going to have to back away from this. And yeah, look, they'll get Dragon here in a second. But again, it just feels like they're stalling. Well, I think the thing is that Fnatic, they look for Chikari. They don't find him. They're going to get Dragon. And in, in your mind, you're like, oh, they committed four members bot side. Can't Firefrost do Baron. But the problem is, Maka was just hiding in the area, constantly applying pressure. And they can't really pick the LeBlanc. She's just a bit too mobile. Uh, so it did make things quite difficult there. They are going to look at this top tower in return. It is objective bounties, remember, so you will get a fair bit of gold for this uh, to try and make, mitigate the difference. Yes, third dragon for Fnatic, but until you secure that fourth, like a singular extra dragon doesn't do that much for you. Doesn't do anything. Shikari is going to try and hop away from the Ornhorn and will end up having to use his flash as well. Top lane tier one was taken, but it ends up being traded for a dragon, a flash, and a tier two in the bot side. Fnatic finally starting to wake up a little bit as Bifrost starts to run out of tradable options. Yeah, so it's still favorable for Fnatic in the end. It's kind of expected when you're ahead, you should be trading up. But I feel like, you know, we saw that big gold lead in the game. It was like 4,000. I can't remember the exact time, but quite early on. We're, we're 3,500, actually. It's gone less. It's gone less. And again, the longer the game goes on, the less relevant the gold lead is. But I will say, take a look at the items coming out. Being this Dream Spike, he has critically the upgraded Eclipse and a Man Immune and a Serelda's Grudge, right? There's going to be so much damage coming out from Bean. I feel like this is where Fnatic can really lean into that power. Uh, and honestly, if anyone just steps up and you land that QE, they will just get chunked. They will get absolutely destroyed. I will say right now... There's an AP Rise as well. Yeah, I was going to say, this Rise is not very tanky. This Rise will not survive a burst damage. And there's like mirror trends across the board. So no, board, so no Ninja Tabby, not that much armor. Bean is so scary right now. They're, they're confident on this spike. They're going to start the Baron on the back of that. And look. Look at Baka's angle. Oh, Baka trying to see if he can be the imposter here as he gets himself all the way onto the back side. They won't be able to kill off anyone just yet. The kick is good to disengage and to get the Devour in for Aldi. So he still sells the mine, but Duel is not a quite as lucky. There's the Cataclysm coming in. No flash, nowhere to go. And two quick kills off of a Baron pick. Yeah, and we saw TP flanks come in for the solo laners, but they were too late. Oh, Shikari, he's got no more Mega in a second. You gotta be careful. Look at the damage! Look at the damage coming out! That is why the tank rise is kind of needed. You go full AP and you will get just deleted from the map. That's the third pick of this fight, and that means it's almost certainly gonna be the Baron for the side of that Fnatic. I'm glad it was AP rise just so we could see how much damage it did there. That's absurd, right? But it's kind of what we expect you from this fight. Fnatic, they knew they were confident. They knew they had the items to work with. They, they literally just board and they go, we can start the power and luckily engage. And despite the fact you got a Tom Kench. C-Boy, C-Boy. He's gonna try and look for it. Denova 1600, he has to try and get in before the, everyone else, but they've just stopped it. They've just decided you're not gonna be able to get it, my friend. He smited to try and keep himself alive. The Mega, or Super Mega Dead Rocket was a nice idea. But honestly, Bifrost, you're clutching the straws. Yeah, uh, just great patience from Fnatic, it shows a restraint. As soon as they send some things up, Baka goes to play Interruption. The whole team stopped touching the Baron. They all blocked the Sonic Waves because the Execute damage from the Q can do enough with Smite to get it from like 1600. Uh, and they, they managed to mitigate it. But we see the Engage coming in. So despite the fact we see Jinx get eaten, Jinx flashing away, it's just not enough. And again, we see the TP flank from Shikari and Fury. It's just too late. Your bot lane's already yep. dead, right? And they just say, okay, well, I guess you get out. And but then, I, I want to see this again. They got out. I want to see this again. This but they got out, and then they went in back in. Look at this. One, two, three. Three auto attacks, a Q, and a W. Well, it wasn't even auto attacks. It was just feathers, right? No, it was auto attacks. Three auto attacks. It looked I'm like it wasn't sure. range. It just like QE, right? Just yank back. But either way, a lot of damage coming in. A lot of damage, and now the base is being taken. So Fnatic have had enough of this game right now, and they're going to be able to crack that one open pretty damn easily. They've got themselves... A Gnar pushing the top side. I, I like the idea, Shikari, but you got to be careful with how long you spend here. This is a huge amount of minions with Baron Buff. You could lose the game. But I'm gonna, it's going to end. Shikari, I mean, do what he wants in the side lane. I'm not sure it would make a difference if it was here. Oh my god, that was one sigil of silence or sigil of malice. We now see the Ornhorn here. He's going to get a knock up of two. The final way to follow it up as they try and just take down Nexus Turret number one. Cataclysm in the stage. This is beginning to get the Devour coming in to try and keep Odie alive. They will take down the Tam Kench, but they haven't taken down the Jinx just yet. The Zaya has fallen, but the Jinx is still resetting. They're going to be able to try and maybe get one more, but they can't overextend because their base is in just in tatters. Something you can do at this point. Oh! Behind Odie nearly gets knife out. 
I mean, he needs to go back and reset, but you're losing the base. Look at the kind of minions. They're just ending the game for Fnatic. They can play with this. They can play with their own food because they know how damn far ahead they are. Need to be a little bit careful, though, because reset's going to be coming in. Baka, very close to going down, but not quite dead. They are just pushing the limit of how far they can take this. The ebb and flow, keeping everyone just about topped up. And the base is just in ruins right now. Yes, you survived, but to what end? And I think this is a frustrating situation for Bifrost, because at least if Fnatic try to go for the end, that's where you have the hope alive. That's where you try and find the turnaround with the low health bars. But no, Fnatic play restrained. It's a best of one. They are the best team in the Super League, and they are not going to make a mistake. They back off. They're going to reset. They're going to get the soul. And they have two in hips down open nexus as well. This should be cut and dry. Should be so easy. And you can see Baka now just either checking to see if anyone's there, checking to see if anyone just overextends even just a little bit. They know exactly where Shikari is and they'll be just pinging out exactly where they want to try and put it. Important to know is Shikari is the tankiest member of the team, but if he dies, I don't even know how you come back into it. There is still a chance. I, I know, there actually, is yeah, always dude, a chance. I'm gonna say that. There like, is always a if chance. If Shikari dies, I don't know how they come into it. Dude, I feel like I don't know how they come into it in general, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm just saying, I've seen bigger gold leads and bigger deficits turned around, so I'm not willing to let a jinx not be counted out yet. You know what I mean? I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let the jinx happen until the nexus explodes. And Fnatic respect the jinx, so they don't want to look for any over aggressive situations. They could just push up mid, but instead they're gonna dot the eyes, cross the T's, push through the top lane. They take the tier two, and they're just gonna continue pushing. There's no Baron available, but there is the pressure from the super minions coming in. And we got some decent wave clear though with the drinks and the rise! And oh! That's the Jinx! Oh, you can't disrespect it! That was one auto attack and an absolute boatload of burst. Now you don't have Baka. Yeah, I feel like everyone just instantly turned on that LeBlanc and blew her up. Doesn't mean a bit of referee even. We've seen this before today. This LeBlanc going over aggressive in these moments ends up getting punished. Super Minion still pushing in, but you can see Bifrost are kind of ebbed and flowed to, to deal with them. And now. I don't think the minions are going to be enough, right? Odie can just step up and clear them out. Yeah, with the rise as well. You can't really go for this one here. You do have a bit of a shield. And oh my what is that, God. What is that? <laughs> that is a full lethality he has a Zaya. now as well, yeah. right? He has armor. And you got to be careful, though. They might just go with this without minions right now because they recognize with the super minions, they've got pressure in the mid lane. But the damage from the tower does ramp up, but you also get a lot more tanky stats on top of it. Yeah, you are waiting no for Baka, who's still not up, but he doesn't have TP just yet. Shikari is about to go mega. As Fnatic TK just keep the pressure up. They keep pushing forward on this and being just dodging everything left and right. Yeah, they're just trying to use the inhibitors as much as possible. It's still a minute till that Baron. I feel like they could back off. They could go towards it. They don't want to give any space over to Bifrost. Seaboy is potentially hunting, and now things get problematic because Baka's about to come in again. Seaboy, he knows that he wants to get behind us. If he can land a kick onto Bean, it's huge. But Baka's finally back on the map, and they've got a wave synced now up now. It's not whenever, it's not whenever. They gotta go for it, and they are gonna go for it. The Ornhorn comes in with the tidal wave. He flashes in, they're gonna try and get on top of Bean, but he can't get him yet. Now Maxi's gonna be trying to reset off it. There's one reset, that's the Jinx coming on top, but the feathers are just too huge. Now Baka can really join the fight. These health bars are just too damn low. And the Jinx is dead! Your hope is dead! Fnatic, the number one team from the Super League, get the job done! Ooh, a double kill at the end from Baka. I'll play Shikari, but will eventually go down, but it's now one against three, four, five, cross. No way you defend your open Nexus. It's the expected outcome. It took a bit of time to get to the end, but Fnatic come through big. I mean, it was always, they were very tempered, they were very me measured in how they wanted to approach that last fight but the pressure just kept building and building and building. And there was, at the end of it, too much to deal with. And you see, they, they knew they had to respect Odie's Jinx there. I think that's the pivotal thing. They knew that they had to be really concerned about the fact that if you start overextending, if you start dying, the resets come in. But it was just such a difficult one to approach because mm -hmm. like there was so much burst afforded to them, right? Like the desire in particular, if anyone stepped up, even Shikari, who is the tankiest, it's just like QE with the empowered uh, damage coming out from the, the Nami, just way too much burst. Yeah, it really was. And look, expected start for the Fnatic TK side, and this is going to be something that we want to see them build off of now, now. This is a team that, again, is favored in this tournament, should be actively looking to try and win it for the first time for the Super Mega in what feels like an eternity. 
I mean, they look good, right? A lot of people looking at them as one of the favorites for the tournament. People have been talking about the general strength of the Super League, and they crushed that league. And in this game, Bifrost, they felt desperate, right? They were looking for these angles of approach. They were looking for opportunities like this trying to regress but they were just completely caught out time and time again yep i, I just love seeing that clip where it's just <laughs> one two <laughs> dismantled dismantled yep and again look this is down to i straight up like again they're just a fantastic team that played the composition the way they wanted to do it and just a pure burst they built from themselves they had answers to everything that bifrost threw at them honestly it just felt like a very you know, just measured and calm and collected win. It was a little bit risky towards the end, but I still think they had enough going for them that they never really in any danger of losing. I, I think the thing was, right, is in a situation like this, they're, they're pushing, trying to go to the end. They chunk Cody out. They, you know, the Nexus is exposed after this tower goes down. It feels like maybe they could have gone more, but you can tell they understand the environment, right? They're miles ahead. They're in a best of one. They don't want to go too far and try and throw it. So I have to respect the fact that they're at least tempered on this. Yeah, honestly, again, it was just kind of being respectful to their opponents, saying, look, we're not going to give away the game. We're not going to try and just go for the fancy fun points of ending the game right now. It might have worked out, but it might not have. And that would have given an absolute... Why flip? Why flip? Why flip? When you can win the game You know what? That should be your new content segment. You should look at Baron Flip and go... Why flip, you know? And then just yeah, kind of I've bring seen, it back. I feel like I'm harrowed after, <laughs> I, I was gonna say. <laughs> after a split. I've seen so many Baron flips across the board. <laughs> Questionable ones. It is, it's refreshing, Fnatic. I mean, particularly when they did the Baron setup so restrained. As soon as they saw the enemy jungler approach, they stopped doing damage to it. And I think that is the main takeaway. Obviously, a lot of pieces of this team have worked together before, but it feels like they're all on the same page. It feels like the communication is good. Individually, it is a stacked lineup, but they work together as a unit. And this was a final fight. It did feel a little bit precarious at times. Uh, and I have to say, highlight has been deciding I'm going to kill the Jinx. The massive feather's there, but then nearly ends up going down because he flashes forward. Just to burst out Odi. Actually, sorry, flashes backwards, but goes forward to burst out Odi. A uh, really confident play coming out of this fight. A lot of trust in each other. Yeah, and again, look at the health bars on all of the members of Fnatic TK right there. There's so many just very much in the red. And as we said on the in the scoreboard, it is very much a slow but steady wins the race. A little bit of hiccups here and there, but they'll be happy with that performance nonetheless. Yeah, and I think that's something to say about Bifrost. We, we've seen in the NLC Bifrost up to the team who can come back. As you said, Odi, that AD carry in the later stages can be an absolute monster. And you can kind of see where, even with the depths that they had, there were moments where it felt difficult. But all things considered, I think this was a hard matchup for Bifrost. Fnatic, definitely the stronger team, and they came in convincingly. Yeah, they really, really did. And honestly, this is now becoming a, a great start for Fnatic TK. A fortunate start for Bifrost. And we looked at the groups, and we'll sort of see them later on before we sign off. But this is a no more easy games. There are no easy teams. There are no easy groups. You have to win as many as you possibly can. And for Bifrost in particular, you can't be dropping many in the group stages. Yeah, I think that's something that people have said when looking at the Amazon EE Masters is that this year, this split, super balanced groups. A lot of them, it's it's hard to call. In particular, like people look at the, the team they expect to be the third seed. I feel like a lot of people look at this group and they're like, Bifrost probably the third strongest team. And it looks so difficult for them to, to get into the top two to break through. Yeah, well, we can have a look at the standings right now and see exactly what you're talking about as we come out to the first day of the Amazon EU Masters coverage. And already you can see there Entrox, Bandu, and the side of Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition getting the Prime League off to a start, but it's the LFL with a 3-0 on the day across their games. Yeah, I mean, the only team who didn't get a win for the LFL is Keiko because they didn't play, yep. right? Everyone else just completely smashed it. But I think this has been a great day as well for the Prime League, right? They got that few wins. Uh, and I think particularly up against Bisons, Unicorns of Love, I'd say that's probably the big one of the day where a lot of people might have expected to go in favor of Bison. So strong performance there. Yeah, very strong performance. We're gonna have a look now at the schedule for tomorrow because we are bringing you more of the Amazon EU Masters main stage as we go into tomorrow's days. We're gonna start off with the Prime League versus the PG Nats. But the big one that I'm looking at right now is Bisons versus LDLC. That could be huge for that group. I feel like K Corp against X7 yeah, as well. That's true. I mean, that one, you know, we saw K Corp uh, facing off against the NLC representatives in the finals, two splits in a row. We'll get them against the first seed again in groups. And uh, I mean, I expect it to be a bang. There's a lot of good games there. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty is that with the, the many years now, the EU Masters started in 2018. We are now into 2022, the fourth year, technically the fifth year. We count them as 2018, 2019, 2020, 2022, whatever I can count. That's what I discovered today. But, you know, this is the fifth year of the tournament. 
it doesn't, it's, it's been refined. People understand what's expected and teams have built bigger and better throughout the splits to just get to this point. Yeah, and I, I feel like the, the competition, it just feels like it's rising and rising. There's definitely been times where I felt like there was like a standout coming to the tournament and then they ended up delivering. But especially now we have like four seeds from the LFL, you know, we have four seeds from the Ultra League, three seeds from the Super League and the Prime, Prime League. League, two seeds. There's so many teams where, you know, especially when we come to the group stages where best of ones a lot can happen, it's hard to call who will end up coming out. And there's definitely standouts like Fnatic. The of expectation course. is they beat Ryfrost Frost and they, they did, they delivered. But even so, it's like, it is heated. I feel like one slip up. And that's the thing. If you have a bad day or two, you have a bad match or two, that can be enough to just not make it out of groups. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's what you said about best of ones. You don't get to redo that game. You just kind of have to take the L, move on with your kind of, you know, the rest of your group stage and, and just hope and pray that you're able to make up the wins to get you into to the knockout stages because that's when you really are going to try and you know shine if you will throughout the EU Ma uh, amazon eu masters but that is all the time we have for you today thank you to our first caster duo of munchables and dagda thank you mr ox for joining me today sorry i hit you a little hard there i didn't mean to just like, smack you it. on the shoulder i'm sorry hey and of course thank you to all of our fantastic people behind the camera in production and of course everyone who's been watching us today we will see you guys on the same channel at the same time tomorrow <laughs>